Gospel Titles and Authors The titles and authors given in the Gospels of the New Testament read in most Bibles in large, bold text. The Gospel of Mark, the Gospel of Luke, the Gospel of Matthew, and the Gospel of John. We as readers are led to assume, and some Bibles outright state, that these books were written by Jesus' disciples and direct eyewitnesses to the events they describe. Matthew being written by, well, Jesus' disciple Matthew, the former tax collector. John written by John, son of Zebedee. And in the case of Mark, a man connected with Peter. And Luke, named after a traveling companion mentioned by Paul in Colossians. However, this couldn't be further from the truth. As confirmed by early manuscripts of the documents themselves, originally, these Gospels were untitled and did not name any sort of author. They were written anonymously, and the authors, whoever they might have been, never wrote their names, nor did they write in the first person or insert themselves into the narratives. It's actually quite obvious that the disciples hadn't written these texts when one notes that they were written in Greek by educated Greek speakers. Literacy in the ancient world was rare. By modern estimates, at the best of times in antiquity, only about 10% or so of the population was able to read, and most of these were concentrated in urban areas like cities and not in the type of areas where Jesus' disciples might have been from. Keep in mind, most of them were fishermen and hard laborers in the countryside. By all accounts, peasants. The ability to read is one thing. In the ancient world, it was another to be able to write and compose a literary work. Few people in the first and second centuries would have been able to produce something like the Gospels. The few there were would have been from eastern cities of the Roman Empire, like Alexandria. Most scholars agree that none of the Gospels were written by eyewitnesses, and more likely to have been written by urban Christians who were recording oral and written traditions, sayings, and stories about Jesus and his life passed down and compiling them in a unified text. The Gospels themselves are not apologetic about this. The Gospel of Matthew is written completely in the third person, using they to refer to the disciples, and never we. The tax collector turned disciple Matthew is never referred to as me, but instead just him, there is zero indication in the actual text that we are supposed to be led to believe this man also wrote what we are currently reading. Same thing with Luke and Mark. The author of the Gospel of John clearly makes a distinction between himself and his informant, an unnamed disciple whom Jesus loved, who was the source of the stories and traditions he is writing down at the end of the Gospel. The end of the Gospel of John reads like this, Peter turned and saw that the disciple whom Jesus loved was following them. This is the disciple who has testified to these things and has written them. We know that his testimony is true. Jesus did many other things as well. If every one of them were written down, I suppose that even the whole world would not have room for the books that would be written. The anonymous author is simply stating he gathered this information for this text from an eyewitness of Jesus and that he had not met Jesus himself. The author dictated the gospel from this individual, however they might have been. It was only traditions made decades after the construction that tried to tie names to these untitled and anonymous texts, and the names just stuck even though there is no factual or textual basis for them, and the texts themselves explicitly argue against it. To early Christians, it didn't matter to them who the authors of these texts were. However, later Christians wanted to bring more authenticity to the documents by making their authors direct eyewitnesses to the events they described. They would essentially take names that are mentioned in the New Testament and say, yeah, that guy wrote this, with no corroborating evidence. The tradition in our modern Bibles of providing names and authors to the Gospels is just not accurate to the original text. J.B. Phillips. He is a prebendary of the Chief Justice Cathedral in England, a paid servant of the Anglican Church. He says that these Gospels, the Gospel of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, speaking with Matthew, he tells us, early tradition ascribed this Gospel to the Apostle Matthew, the first book of the New Testament. But scholars nowadays almost all reject this view. J.B. Phillips. This is what he says, sir. And every Bible that you have, it says that the gospel according to St. Matthew, the gospel according to St. Mark, the gospel according to St. Luke, the gospel according to St. John. I am asking what is according to, according to, according to. Not only according to what we are seeing there, not only it is not the word of God, but Matthew is not the word of Matthew, Mark is not the word of Mark, and Luke is not the word of Luke, and John is not the word of John. This is the clear-cut evidence in black and white. Pastor Stanley mentioned that the Quran also speaks about the Torah, 
which is the law of Moses, and the Injil, meaning the gospel of Jesus, no doubt. See, there is a relationship between the teachings of Moses, Jesus, and Muhammad. To us Muslims, in actual fact, this is all one religion. There is only one religion. These are not three distinct religions, but it's a different subject. As soon as I start expounding that, you need more time. But the Quran tells us that we believe in the principle that Moses was inspired by God, David was inspired by God, Jesus was inspired by God, and whatever they gave out in their respective times, it was from God, infallible. But those words were not preserved in their pristine purity. That is what we are questioning. We are not questioning Moses, but what was written was not written by Moses. If he had signed his name, no problem. If Jesus had countersigned Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, there would have been no problem. But since Jesus didn't write a word, in his lifetime not a word was written. He didn't write it, nor did anybody write a word in his lifetime. These are all books, anonymous books. And the Christian scholars are telling us they have no ulterior motives. I might have, but not your scholars. What ulterior motive do they have to tell you that he has used, Matthew has used Mark's gospel freely. In the language of the school teacher, he was copying wholesale from Mark. And Mark was not even one of the 12 disciples of Jesus. Why should an eyewitness and a ear witness like Matthew go and copy somebody who wasn't there? It doesn't make sense. And in the book itself, Matthew tells us, Matthew 9.9, 9, it says, while he, Jesus, was going forth into the way, he saw, he, Jesus, saw a tax collector called Matthew. And he, Jesus, comes up to him and he says to Matthew, follow me. And he, Matthew, followed him, Jesus. Who wrote that? God write it? Did Jesus write it? No. Did Matthew write it? No. Yes. If Matthew wrote it, he would say, while he was going forth into the way, he saw me at the tax collector's table, and he came up to me and told me to follow him, and I followed him. This is written by somebody else. 